YouTube! I'm Monica, the marketing manager at Etched Actuarial. And just a few weeks ago, Bria recorded this interview with our Actuary Accelerator community member, Emma, who just got her first actuarial job in pension consulting. In this interview, she shares so much insight into what the interview process was like, the qualifications that made her stand out, and at the end, she even tells you how her first few days on the job have been like. I know that the insight Emma shares is going to drastically help you on your own mission to get your actuarial job too. So let's hit play. Hello everyone. Today I'm here with Emma and she is going to be sharing a lot with us about her brand new actuarial role and exactly what she did to get it. I'm so excited to go into some of the interview process, some of the things that helped her get this job and her qualifications. And I know we are going to learn a lot. So welcome Emma. Thanks. Okay. So how about we start a little bit with what your actuarial background looks like and maybe a bit about why you got into actuarial work in the first place. Yeah, so um, I graduated um, with a Bachelor of Science in Mathematics from um, a big university in America and um, I didn't have any actuarial experience from school. Um, I did take an interest theory class which covered most of what was on FM. Um, my last semester because I took it looked interesting to me and so I just took it but it wasn't until after that that I decided that I really wanted to be an actuary I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do when I graduated um, so I looked into the career and it looked really good to me so um, I started studying for FM and uh, so I have passed FM and P um, and yeah, that's most of the background that I have. I really don't have uh, much else. Okay, so when you got the job, you had exam P and FM passed, which is awesome because a lot of people think that you have to have a lot of exams, usually three or four sometimes, passed in order to get a job. Um, but actually, I did a YouTube video probably about a month ago now. I will link to it in the description of this video where I talk about the fact that a lot of employers are only looking for one exam passed. So mm -hmm. it's definitely possible, and I'm glad you're proving that. Yeah, I I was I was under the impression that I probably had to pass another one. So hmm. um, when I got the job, I was like really excited because I was like, awesome. Now I can like in my job, I can get the like bonus and raise for passing that third exam when I do. Mm -hmm. And you probably don't have to pay for it, right? Because right. your employer will. <laughs> yes. yes. So will you also get study time too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah awesome. So for this for IFM, which is the third exam, which I am going to take despite the changes uh, to the SOA, um, I get, I think like 80 or 100 hours of study okay. time um, for my first attempt. And if I don't pass on the first attempt, then it like goes down for the second attempt, just a little bit, maybe like 60 hours, I think, but yeah. Okay, awesome. So that's some really, a really big benefit of working in a company um, that supports like actuaries is because you'll actually get a lot of time to study for your exams. They'll often help you in purchasing study materials. They'll pay for your exam sometimes. So there's so many benefits. So that's definitely something to look for. Um, an actuarial science pro or actuarial student program is what it's usually called um, when you're looking for a job. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about your technical skills. Did you have anything in terms of that when you started? I had taken the Excel Ninja Challenge I actually didn't finish it though. I didn't watch the last video, um, but yet I probably will still go back and do it. But um, I knew the basics of Excel and then I did the Excel Ninja Challenge and um, learned a lot. And in my interview, I was like, I talked to them a lot about the projects that I did um, from the Excel Ninja Challenge. And I think that they really liked that because they would all, I don't know, they would get like, mm, and like write stuff down and I would talk about the projects. So um, yeah, but that's kind of the only technical skill I really had is I was like probably like an intermediate Excel user um, and still learning. Um, and I am a fast learner, so that's not a technical skill, but that was something that I think they also appreciated. But yeah, Excel was really the only skill that I yeah, that's something you definitely want to emphasize during your interview is, if it's true, of course, is that you are a fast learner because sometimes there's going to be different technical skills that maybe you don't have 
and they want the and candidate to have. So if you just demonstrate that you have one particular skill and you can fairly easily learn another one and you know from the past that you're quick at learning those technical skills, then it's going to be really beneficial. Um, and for those of you that don't know, the Excel Ninja Challenge was something we did in our Actuary Accelerator community. So Emma was a part of that and that's where she got the videos uh, to learn Excel. And, and the projects too. Okay, awesome. So could you tell us a little bit about the interview process that you went through? Yeah, so the first interview um, that I did was actually, a I hadn't seen this before or heard of it before, but it was a recorded interview. So I wasn't actually talking to a person. Um, okay. They sent me a link to a website that the company had created. And um, it basically asked, um, it asked me questions. Some of the questions um, it, like gave me only 30 seconds to read it and think about it and then I had to respond immediately and I could only re record a response once um, but it was just recorded for my laptop um, but then some of the questions you also um, could uh, redo a couple times if you wanted to they gave you like two or three tries um, and so yeah that was that was really scary at first I, I didn't know what to expect but um, when I actually did it it wasn't that bad it was all behavioral questions so things like, um, like tell us about a situation where you worked in a team with somebody that wasn't helpful or something like stuff like that. And they did ask, um, tell us about something you've worked on in Excel before. Okay. So, yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if you got to the interview parts of the Actuary Accelerator community, but one of the things I recommend in there when you're answering those types of questions, or it, really in preparing for an interview, is to have a story base of different things that you can talk about during your interviews about things you've done and different thing, like different actions you've taken. So when they ask about behavioral things like that, you always have a bunch of different stories you can refer to. Is that something you did when you were preparing? That is something that I did, yeah. I did end up watching, I think I watched a couple, there was like a couple of videos that I watched that were about um, interviews, but um, yeah, so I definitely came up with beforehand, I thought of like, well, I didn't think of them, I actually Googled like, what are the top like 100 behavioral questions that somebody, could ask and I went through a lot of them and kind of looked at the different themes in them and came up with different stories that I created like from those themes so you know like a story about like handling a, handling a difficult customer or person which is kind of different because there's not we're not really working with customers but um and then also like how um you handle like stress or like um, difficult situations, and then also teamwork, like something about teamwork um, and stuff like that. So yeah, I definitely came up with some different stories and had some notes written down in front of me while I was um, interviewing during that one. Okay, very interesting. So after you did the video interview, did you have an interview with someone live? Like you actually got to meet people at the company? Yeah, so after that interview, um, they sent me an email back uh, within like the next week um, asking for it. It was like in person, you know, because of COVID. Um, usually in like non-COVID times, it would be in person, but this one was, um, I'm also in a different state. So it was um, through my computer. It was like a Teams call. And um, I met with seven different people. Wow. It was a really long interview. It was like <laughs> three bet. hours long. Um, but it was also mostly behavioral questions. Like they asked me like what my experience was with like Microsoft Access because that's something that they use a lot. I told them I know what it is, but I have no experience. And they're like, we don't expect you to have experience in everything. Um, we're going to teach you on the job. So um, and then they asked a few questions about like what's appealing about the area that that like the city that that company is in, um, like why I would want to move there. Um, and um, the different people that I met with were like different people, um, different levels of people like in the company. Like I met with two people who would be in, who are, well, I got the job. So who are in the same role that I have. Okay. Um, and I met with some people who are higher up uh, and like who are actual, um, like qualified like FSA. And okay. FSA. And also some people who are even higher. In the company. Okay, awesome. So it sounds like this is, 
temporarily a remote position and then eventually you're going to move to the city where it's in, right? Yep. Awesome. I think that's something that a lot of employers will ask, especially when you're not from that city or actually it applied to me as well. Um, they wanted, when I interviewed for the position I wanted to get, they asked why I wanted to stay in the city that I was currently living in. So employers often do want to make sure that they're hiring candidates that are really interested in the area. A lot of the time, if you mention you have family in the area, things like that, things that hold you to a certain area, that will be beneficial because companies don't want to hire people and then have them leave because they moved to a different city or something like that um, a year later. So it's always good to emphasize that during your interviews is that you're really interested in either living in a particular city or staying in the city where that company is located. Okay, awesome. Uh, so can we talk a little bit about your work experience in the past? Like what kind of experience you had there? Yeah, so um, I, when I graduated from college, um, I had only worked in like food service and um, babysitting basically. Okay. I did a lot of that too. <laughs> <laughs> so I worked at like a coffee shop and I worked at like another restaurant. Um, but then um, I got a um, temporary contracting position um, right out of college that was for a data like artificial intelligence data management company uh -huh. so um, that was uh, I didn't technically my my title was like data specialist but I didn't actually do much data analysis or anything um, they did have data analysis in my job description but it ended up being like a very interesting company that had me just do a whole bunch of miscellaneous things Okay. Um, but I did get some experience with Excel there um, and some experience with some sort of like project management slash um, just like communication skills kind of. Mm -hmm. um, so I made sure to mention that also in my um, interview when I was talking about my work experience. Um, but that um, job was, my position was basically uh, cut off when uh, COVID started. Oh. So um, I got a job as a math tutor at a, an after school um, learning center for okay. kids from like kindergarten all the way up to like, you know, senior in high school. So I was teaching kids how to count, but I was also teaching calculus. Um, oh, wow. and it was a, That's a very job. wide range. <laughs> yes, very wide range. But um, that also helped with my communication skills. And um, I made sure to mention in my interview that it helped, um, that that job specifically helped me uh, formulate difficult um, concepts and like put them in words that like people who don't understand them could understand. Yeah, which I know so important. is a really big part of what actuaries do is they communicate information that is to like lay people, people who don't understand. Um, right, because in actuarial roles, you're constantly working with people that are non-actuary. So it's really important that we can break down all those technical terms and all the crazy things that we're doing and talk about it to people that don't really understand all of that. So it's definitely something to um, emphasize during your interviews. And actually, another video I did a few weeks ago is about the soft skills that actuarial employers are looking for and communication skills is a big one. So that's definitely a video to watch after this mm -hmm. one. Okay, awesome. So it sounds like you had some really good experience that helped you get into this role and helped you develop the skills that actuarial employers were looking for. So that is awesome. You, you had two exams passed, you had some technical skills, you had some related experience, and you had your communication skills, which if anyone has watched this channel for a while, they'll know that those are some of the major things that I emphasize everyone needs to know and have for an actuarial position. So you check them all off and congratulations on getting your job. Uh, so could you, before we end this, let us know a little bit about what you are doing in your new job. I know you've only been there for a few days so far, but if you could give us any insight into that or what you might be doing in the future would be interesting too. Yeah, so from what I know so far, um, I'm going, so I'm working in um, the retirement side of actuarial, it's actually consulting, it's a consulting firm as well. Okay. Um, so I'm working in retirement and employee benefits um, and pensions is kind of like what we're doing. But as an actuarial analyst and like somebody who's brand new to the job, most of what I'm doing is like data cleaning, like um, 
making making like sure that data is like complete so that people can like run it through models and everything. Um, and so a lot of that is Excel work and on access as well. And Does that involve any uh, programming or anything? I know for me, when I was cleaning data, uh, we had some macros set up in VBA so that it would automatically point out things that looked a little off or suspicious that we would have to go check manually. Do you have any of that? Yes, yeah, so um, I'm learning a whole lot about that actually tomorrow, but <laughs> um, we definitely, yeah, there's some like VBA involved, which um, I do know a little bit of VBA from the videos that you have um, on the actual accelerator community, um, which um, were really helpful. So hopefully um, I can, I'm sure I'll learn more um, on the job over the next few weeks, but um, yeah, that's a lot of what we're doing is data cleaning and um, I haven't even been introduced to all the projects that I'm going to be on yet, so I'm sure there's more that I'm not sure of yet. But. Yeah, awesome. So with a consulting company, usually, and I just want to verify that this is the same situation for you, is that you're going to be working with multiple different companies. You like helping them with projects that probably they don't have enough staff for right now, or they don't have the expertise within their organization to do the projects. So they'll hire your company or the company that you work for to help and assist with these projects. So you'll likely get exposure to a lot of different areas of actuarial work. Awesome. So again, congratulations on your new job. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I know it's going to help a lot of people understand the interview process, the qualifications, and a little bit about what actuaries do. So I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I um, am happy to help since I watch all of your videos probably like three times in my uh, career of like learning about being an actuary and um, getting this position. So Wow, thank you. I'm so excited to hear that. <laughs> All right, bye for now. Bye, thanks. Emma truly embodies what it takes to be a great actuarial candidate. During her job interview, she really emphasized her desire to be in the same city that the company was located at, her past experience with Excel projects that she gained as a member of the Actuary Accelerator community, her fast learning skills, and her past experience that was relevant to an actuarial role. These are all things that actuarial employers value in top candidates. If you're a member of the AAC, then you can get access Access to all the trainings mentioned by logging in, going to resources by category, and then selecting the appropriate category that you're looking for. Now, if you want to learn what worked to help other aspiring actuaries get their first job, we have a few other similar interviews on our YouTube channel. I'll show them here and here. That's all for today. See you soon.